Hi, I'm Dr. Monica Jetty, Consultant General Physician in Pace Hospital, High Tech City. Today, I'm here to talk about viral fevers. Viral fever per se, any kind of fever which has an underlying viral infection is are called viral fevers and any kind of fever which is caused by an underlying viral illness is called are called viral fevers. There are multiple kinds of viral fevers which are, they all depend upon the causative organism and also the site of the infection. The most common examples of viral fevers are adenovirus, influenza virus, dengue virus and rotavirus infections. There are multiple causes of viral fevers. Usually the most of the common viruses which cause viral infections are influenza virus, dengue virus, rhabdovirus and adenovirus and they can spread through multiple routes. The mode of transmission mostly may can be because of inhalation of the droplets where a virus infected person usually coughs or sneezes which, which causes the droplets to fall off and when a normal person who inhales the droplets containing of virus particles can get viral infection. They can also get viral infection by con consuming food which is uh, contaminated by virus and it can also spread by mosquito bites or any in case of ra uh, rabies virus it can spread by dog bites and when there is the transmission of virus infections like HPV and HIV it is usually by the contamination of uh, the person with bodily fluids. viral infections will not have any symptoms. They usually run through their course but they don't uh, actually cause any symptomatic uh, inhibitions for the patient. But some viral fevers can cause symptoms like fever which that where the temperatures may come in between 99 degrees to 1 or 3 degrees or above, chills which is associated with continuous shivering, headaches, body pains, cases of dehydration and in some cases where we can see the rashes uh, and also boil kind of boils in skin uh, and surrounding tissues. Some people may also complain of loose tools and also vomiting. Most of the viral infections are self-limiting and they run through their course but some viral fevers like dengue hemorrhagic fever and also viral pneumonias have multiple complications. In cases of dengue hemorrhagic fever, the most common complications where we see are plasma leakage where the plasma from the blood leaks into the interstitial spaces like in the abdomen or in the layers in between the lungs and there can be platelet count fall or there can be a state where viral fevers will cause post viral infection thrombosis where they have the person may have increased the chances of blood clots and so on. Virus, whereas in cases of viral pneumonias there can be a fall in oxygen saturation, patient may require uh, oxygen supplementation and also antivirals for the uh, complications to subside. The key points in diagnosing any disease include considering the symptoms of the patient, taking proper medical history and also the third one comes the blood investigations. Blood investigation mainly depends on ruling out the bacterial infection first. So if the person blood test shows does not have any kinds of signs implying bacterial infection, we go on for viral uh, origin and in fin case when we need to isolate the specific virus the samples can be tested for ELISA based testing where we can isolate the virus and test for it. Most of the viral fevers does not require any antiviral therapy. The main important point in treating viral fevers are treating the symptom, treating the patient symptomatically. Like for example, if the patient is having higher temperatures, we give paracetamol or ibuprofen or acetaminophen to reduce the fever temperature to make the temperature come down and hydration plays an important role in treating viral fevers where it will help in the help in compensating the fluid loss and also help in compensating the 
nutrient i mean electrolyte loss also and proper rest also ensures the patient recovering faster viral fever does not usually have any dietary restrictions the main important thing to be kept in mind is the food should be prepared hygienically and patient should be given a nutrient rich diet and also hydration is the most important thing where it the lost electrolytes and also the fluid loss will be replenished by proper hydration due to high infective variability of the viral infections it is most common that a person can transmit the viral infection to others in a very quick way by following some precautions like proper hand washing maintaining social distances and wearing a mask maintaining the surroundings hygienically and preparing well well cooked and nutrient rich food might help you in not contracting the viral infections again and again viral fevers are contagious as they can spread through multiple uh, routes like inhalation ingestion of the virus contaminated food and also through mosquitoes bites and all by following the measures that what i've discussed previously you can avoid contracting a viral infection most of the viral fevers per se does not cause any symptoms to the patient or they are actually uh, they just run through their course but without causing any complication but in cases like dengue hemorrhagic fever where there is plasma leakage and there's fallen platelet count per se causing complications and also in cases of viral pneumonia where the patients may have fallen oxygen saturation those have complications and they can be pretty dangerous too viral fever usually lasts for 3 to 4 days but in some cases of mainly in dengue season the fever usually lasts till 4th or 5th day but the complications like platelet fall and plasma leakage usually tend to happen between 6th and 6th and 7th day and may last till 8th or 9th days there are some kind of viral infections where the oxygen saturation of the patient tend to fall this is because when the temperature rises there is in the hemoglobin the affinity towards oxygen reduces per se causing to fall in oxygen saturation so we can see a fall in oxygen saturation due to the high infective variability of the virus infection and also because there are multiple modes of transmission viral fevers tend to occur more and due to the environmental changes like higher humidity in cases of rainy season improper preparation of food because of the uh, contaminated water sources people tend to get viral infections again and again yes the patient can actually take shower during viral infections which in turn reduces the body temperature and also helps in reducing the muscle cramps and when a patient takes bath it also helps in personal hygiene and reduces the spread of the viral infection too yes there will be a platelet fall during viral infections along with the platelets we can also see leukocyte fall that is double, uh, lowering of wbc count this is this happens this usually happens because the virus particles directly affect the platelets and also the wbc count in turn they affect the production of the blood cells and also they causes early death of the blood cells leading to leading to their low counts of wbc and also the platelets fever is one of the symptom of flu flu is usually caused by influenza virus which has multiple symptoms like runny nose uh, cough sore throat and also the fever both viral and bacterial fever have similar symptoms like increased body temperature myalgia headaches and some people may also have uh, diarrhea and also vomitings viral fevers are usually 
viral origin and bacterial fevers are mostly caused by bacteria but uh, in case of bacterial fever we need antibiotics to reduce the symptoms and also reduce the infectivity of the organism whereas in vi most of the viral fevers they just run through their course and antibiotics does not work for viral infections. Usually antibiotics are not required in viral infections or viral fevers as they do not work on viral uh, pathogens but some people may require antibiotics in case of viral fevers because due to the fall of WBC and platelet count there can be counter current infections which make the patient susceptible to other infections so basic a small antibiotic is usually prescribed. In case of viral fevers, please do consult a general physician to evaluate whether if it's viral origin or bacterial origin and also for the proper management of the viral fever.